2022 may see a 3090 Super. While that's not as interesting as we would like to think, how about the RTX 4000 series? Hey guys, so today's video is sponsored by CDK Deals, genuine CD keys, not only for software like Windows 10, and we also have a coupon code where you're gonna be able to get this for under $20. What you first wanna do is go and sign up for an account just to make sure all of your information is in there. You can go and search for, it's gonna be the Windows 10 Pro. It's OEM, very easy process. You add it to your cart and you're gonna see that you're gonna have the option to put a coupon code. You're gonna put in CC20, that's my coupon code, and you're gonna get 20% off. And then you just go through the regular checkout process. Basically, you just have to go in Windows. I'm gonna show you how to do this now. You enter the CD key in there and you'll see it's gonna work without any issue. And for the price that you're paying, I really think it's a fantastic deal to get a real genuine, smooth working copies of Windows 10. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology. Remember to stay subscribed if you like content like this and smash that like button. So today, let's take a little look into the future and see what may potentially be coming. As we stand now, we're still in a very murky GPU availability and pricing situation. Some GPUs are available, but they always come with a caveat. For example, they're either going to be too expensive, that's why they're in stock. They're going to have maybe low efficacy for mining, so cryptocurrency miners don't want it, or they're just flat out going to be GPUs that people really don't want. So having said that, let's take a look well into next year to 2022. Let's see what's going on. Now, recently there have been some murmurs of an RTX 3090 Super, and basically this is just going to be taking advantage of the full potential of that particular GPU. I don't think it's going to be extremely uh, interesting for most people, not only because it's going to be a mega expensive GPU, just like the existing 3090 is. Um, there really aren't too many more applications where a GPU like that makes a tremendous amount of sense. I mean, even a 3090, while of course it can't max out all games, especially if you're playing 4K, I realize a lot of people like to push games that are very, very much demanding on these type of GPUs. For most gamers, it really doesn't make a difference. There isn't too interesting a library of games currently out now. Perhaps the next Battlefield uh, games that are coming out are going to be the biggest hits that really take advantage of hardware like this. Traditionally, Battlefield has always been a beautiful game in terms of the graphics and implementing, you know, different hardware and things like that but for now not too much interesting to really take advantage of something like that and I think most people would prefer that Nvidia focuses on strengthening sort of the mid-tier and the regular high-tier GPUs like a 3070 and 3080 or a 3080 Ti making sure that they have even more stock of those because that really has not been met a new GPU like that just adds something else to the mix that people really aren't very interested now while the super variants not only the 3090 but it could also be super variants of the other GPUs may be coming out before RTX 4000. Does it really make too much sense? I mean, look at uh, RTX 3080 versus the original 3090. There's not a massive difference there in terms of gaming performance, especially when you throw a 3080 Ti right in the middle. Now, where does a 3080 Super fit? In terms of traditional frames per second and rasterization, is it really going to be really micromanaged right in the middle of like a 3080 and a 3080 Ti? or a 3080 Ti and a 3090. It really doesn't make too much sense. The only thing that it could offer um, that would be perhaps a little more interesting is perhaps more VRAM than the 12 gigabytes on the 3080 Ti, maybe something like 20 or something like that. Then it would start to be a more interesting GPU or perhaps if they made it a little bit more efficient in terms of its power usage. So those are the things that we should look for in order to justify another super series of GPUs. Because if we're talking about just traditional performance in gaming and even content creation it's not going to do much unless it's more efficient or it has more VRAM. It's very possible Nvidia may switch from Samsung that currently makes your GPUs to TSMC but is that really a good idea? TSMC have set prices are going up and they've been keeping pretty busy with AMD and Apple and everything else that they make chips for so we'll have to wait and see if that's going to be a good idea. So then as you can see not much there to the super variants but RTX 4000, what they're calling Lovelace. I mean, usually I don't like to speculate this far out, but there are a couple of things that could actually be beneficial, possibly if they work out. Now, if Nvidia is potentially considering switching from Samsung, who manufactures their uh, GPUs now, to TSMC, that could be very, very interesting, but 
TSMC is definitely very busy making chips for literally everyone else, unless Samsung has just been way too overwhelmed by the demand that the NVIDIA GPUs have had. Perhaps TSMC can scale faster um, than Samsung might be able to. Maybe if NVIDIA switches, I'm pretty sure they're going to keep this in mind with the current shortages and everything like that. I mean, after all, they want to make as many GPUs as fast as possible. And if it came down to ramping up production and spending more on the manufacturing side, if they're making Making more GPUs to actually sell them, I'm sure that's something that they're also going to do. Now, in terms of performance for the RTX 4000, this is where it gets a little bit sketchy because, of course, we always assume a decent jump up in performance generation to generation. Often it's maybe 10 to 15 percent, it can be less. Some generations are considerably more. Of course, don't forget that initially RTX 3000 had a pretty insane sort of generational leap with the price to performance ratio. If you look at the RTX 3070 at 499 and compare it to the previous 2080 Ti flagship with similar performance to the 3070, but coming in at $1,200, certainly was a big leap as well as the 3080 at 699. Now we know those prices did not hold true. The prices were inflated a considerable amount because of availability issues. So you can bet that with RTX 4000, regardless of the performance, I think prices are going to be up across the board to sort of like preemptively prepare for any type of uh, shortages or high demand once again. And it's very possible demand is going to be so high for RTX 3000, so many people still won't be able to get them. By the time RTX 4000 comes out, those people will be really, really hungry to get a 4000 series GPU, therefore creating another supply and demand issue that may go on actually for several years. Now, those are the more interesting things, I think, to talk about with RTX 4000, because when we get to the actual performance, I mean, even now, look at how performant a 3080 is, a 3090, even the AMD GPUs. Most people really don't want or need more performance than they currently have. So releasing a GPU that's much faster than 3080s and 3090s for much higher pricing, I don't think that's going to be very interesting to people, unless it really comes with very, very steady supply, as well as at least stable prices because if the third party AIB partners pricing of their GPUs like the 3080 Ti and even some of the AMD GPUs are anything to go on we know that pricing is going to go up tremendously for RTX 4000 so I really don't think you can cram in there enough performance to really make people want to skip the 3000 series most likely as people upgrade to 4000 and they see more available for RTX 3000 whenever that catches up you know in a year or two years from now who knows when things are going to go back to normal but i just don't see rtx 4000 really exciting people and that's going to be a major problem because even though people are really hyped up still for the nvidia gpus it really does come down to particular use cases crypto miners have used them because they're so effective at mining ethereum but gamers are certainly losing interest because they have not been able to get the gpu that they want or if they have it's come at a pretty exorbitant price um, after a long time of searching or standing in line so that may dull the excitement for any rtx 4000 gpu regardless of what you know the performance may be there the only way it's going to drum up excitement again is if the pricing was similar to the original rtx 3000 gpus with a similar gain in performance but i don't think nvidia is going to make that mistake again as cool as it was to see early on because they saw extremely quickly that really got out of hand with gpus not available at all and prices on the second hand market were twice or even sometimes triple what the original MSRP was. So that's why the future is a little bit funny. And I think the most important thing to focus on is availability of the GPUs out now. And I really think that's what most gamers want to see. Good pricing and easy access to be able to purchase that GPU and not some GPU that may come out in the future that they're not really very interested in yet. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the content. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.